so at least kind of works. Um, so angles in standard position. Ang angles in standard position is a, uh, a strange thing when you, when you take what you know about trigonometry from get grade 10, which is triangle trig, and all of a sudden you put it on the Cartesian plane, right? And so, that, but there's, and like I said, there's all these little details that come together to help us answer questions. But what I want to do first is just briefly talk about what angles in standard position is, like why we do it, and kind of review the meaning behind it. So you don't have to write anything here, you can just watch. And the idea is I've got this terminal arm, it always starts um, right here. Let's see if I can get this to work. It always starts right here. So the positive x-axis and then rotates this direction, right? And it can rotate as many degrees as you want. 360 is one full resolution. It could revolution. It could keep going. Uh, we don't usually worry too much about that once in a while we do, but usually we're looking at between 0 and 360 degrees. Um, but the, the strange thing that happens is when... Uh, we get into this quadrant over here, and all of a sudden we talk. We start talking about this related angle, theta related. Why do we do that? Okay, so this is what I'm going to talk about just briefly right now. We're going to try to kind of get a sense of. And so, if I let's say I'm going to put this angle right here, and that's going to make um, my angle about 30 degrees. Okay, if I rotated 150, I'd be on that red line. Okay, that's the that's related to 30. Okay, and the reason why it's related is because 30 gets me down there. 150 plus 30 is 180. 180 straight line. This stuff is hopefully all familiar to you. Everybody good? But what, like why? Are those angles related? Like, I get that they add up to 180, but why? Like, what makes them? So this all has to do, this is why we talk about it on our Cartesian plane, it all has to do with the x and y, x's and y's. So you think about a point. Any point on this line has an x and y value, and the x value is actually this distance, right? And the y value is this distance. So it, it, it didn't like, like it's just in quadrant two. We rotated the arm around 150 degrees, but um, the distances involved are still just my negative x in this case and positive y in this case. And those make this triangle, right? This triangle here, which is the same triangle from grade 10. And, but the acute angle is, whoops, is down here. And so it's 30 degrees. So it's related to this. It takes some time, but it's really important to think about this. Okay? And, and I mean, this is the, real, the first real day of this course, of this semester, where we're learning and kind of, so it might take you some time to warm up. I get that. But this is, this is what's happening. Um, so in every quadrant, we'll make a triangle that has a 30 degree acute angle. And the sine of 30 is always the same, right? So they're all related in every quadrant. And you know that some of them are going to be negative and some of them are going to be positive, right? But they're all related. And, and as we spin that arm around, we get these related angles. So we remember we get multiple answers for questions and we get this sort of thing. Again. Sorry about that. Pictures are in the gym. Pictures are in the gym. Thank you. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Oh, so we've got things like the cast rule. What does the cast rule tell us? Is a hard question on the first day? Exactly. So where cosine, sine, and tangent, where they're positive. So in the second quadrant, sine is positive because it's the S there. And everything else is negative because it's just sine. What's the A stand for? All. So they're all 
positive in that quadrant. And again, if you remember, that comes back to what we were just looking at, the x and y coordinates. So again, let's, let's think that that's 30 degrees. And so if I pick a point, any point on that arm, and I make a triangle down to the x-axis, I've got a right triangle with a 30 degree angle in it. So the other angle is going to be 60, right? 30, 60, and 90. But we usually worry about that acute triangle <clears throat> that's connected to the origin. So 30 degrees. But if, if I rotated some other arm around 150 degrees, then the triangle that the x and y coordinates make is here, because there's my y, and there's my x, and there's the hypotenuse. That's the triangle. The triangle's not uh, up here, okay? This is my x, and this is my y, to this point. So there's my triangle, and this angle will also be 30. Why is it positive? Why is sine positive? Because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And from here, let me zoom in a little bit. From here, there's my opposite, which is y. And y is always positive in the second quadrant. So why is cosine negative? Because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And here's my adjacent. And that's the x value, and x will always be negative in the second quadrant. And then what about that hypotenuse? Well, the hypotenuse is a length, it's a radius, it's not a coordinate, so it's always positive. We can find that with Pythagorean or theorem or something like that, and we'll see that in a, in a few minutes, right? Um, if this was a triangle that was like a 3, 4, like if x was 3 and y was 4, then r would be 5, right? 3, 4, 5, Pythagorean triplet, I think we all know that one. Does that make sense? Starting to come at least a little bit familiar. It's a lot on the first day. I get that. What is Sir Kicks or Ticks? Our valiant knights or Kicks or Ticks? <clears throat> Who knows? Um, it's basically like the, um, the quadrant trig version of Sokotoa. Mm, very well said. That's exactly what I would say is it's like the grade 11 version of Sokotoa. And it's just nice. You, don't, you could do so. Too. I know some teachers who don't use Sir Kicks or Ticks. You could do it that way. But I think it's nice because when we're dealing with X's and Y's, it's easy to remember Sir Kicks or Ticks. And then you just plug in the X's and Y's. You don't have to think about opposite and adjacent. But notice that when we talked about it, I did talk about opposite and adjacent. There's your understanding. There's your big picture that you can flip back and forth. If I'm looking at the triangle, maybe I think about opposite and adjacent. If I'm looking at a pair of coordinates or a set of coordinates, maybe I think about X's and Y's. Like I can do both and flip back and forth. There's your bigger understanding, okay? Um, and then this, this little picture here just demonstrates if this angle is smaller, or sorry, bigger, then all of these angles will be bigger as well, right? And we're gonna talk in a moment about how you find those angles, little formulas, that's pretty easy to do, okay? Any questions about any of that so far. Okay, uh, let's do a little bit of work in this, and then at some point we're gonna look at another little demonstration to think about how this relates to the graphs, because that's a whole nother thing. Then you have these sine curves, like that's an arm rotating around on a circle, but the graph of sine isn't a circle, it's the sine wave, but that's on a graph too. How do they all relate together? Like it's, it, it can be tricky, right? But they all are. Okay, so let's take a look. What is the angle in each quadrant if the related angle is 34? Now here's the trick. And you're gonna start to see all of these different examples come up as we work through this. But a lot of the time, when you're using your calculator and you're calculating an angle, you're always calculating the related angle. You have, like you wanna memorize that. Your calculator gives you the related angle. Always, always, always. So again, we are given the related angle. Okay, and we denote the related angle like this with a little subscript R, theta related. And when I look at this quadrant, in the, in the first quadrant, if 
theta related is 34. What's theta? 34, thank you very much. So that is the easiest formula in all of mathematics. Uh, and I use a little subscript. That's like, that's like a one, Roman numeral one. Uh, so theta in quadrant one is just equal to theta related. We're only going to write these formulas once. You don't have to write it every time, which equals 34 degrees. That one's so trivial, it almost doesn't help us really understand what we're even doing. Okay, so what about theta in quadrant two? This one will be more interesting. Okay, so I will, whoops, I wanted that to be red. Oh, well. Um, here's theta related. So what is theta in quadrant two? Or what's the formula? How do I find it? Good, 180 minus, right? Because I'm going all the way around and then back that way. So theta 2 equals uh, 180 degrees minus theta related, which in this case is 180 minus 34, which is 146. Okay, let's keep going. Theta in quadrant three. Visualize it. What was one of the things I said yesterday? This course is all is like it's called functions. What is a function? I don't need the formal definition. Just in general, what kind of thing is a function? You know? Or what do you think when you hear that word? Anything? Nothing? Okay, it's, it's not this simple. There's a formal definition, but it's like a graph, like something that you've graphed or whatever, right? Like lots of things that you can graph aren't functions, but for today, that's good enough. So our understanding of functions should always include a visual, a graph, a sketch, something like that. And yesterday I talked about, can you, can you say it? Can you draw it? Can you calculate it? Can you write it? Like, can you, all these different things. So can you, can you draw out an angle in quadrant three. I mean, that's easy, but, and can your understanding of related angles be shown visually, be shown algebraically with formulas, that kind of thing, okay? So, uh, there we go, now it's working. Um, if I have an angle that's gone all the way around, there's my theta related. What's the formula for theta in that? Very nice, thank you equals 180 plus theta related, which is 180 plus 34, which is 214. And then the last one, what do you think? 360 minus, so I go all the way around and then back by theta related is the way to do it. Some, like you might think, what is it 270 plus something? No, we never use 270. It's always 180 and 360. And 270 is an important one to know because that's when you know you've, you're into quadrant four. Like you've got to know what those arms are. Zero, 90, 180, 270, 360. After that, you may not memorize them. You would know some of them. But so you know which quadrant you're in. That's a big deal, right? Uh, okay, so this one is 360 minus theta related, which is 360 minus 34, which is, anybody? Yeah. 346. Thank you. Everybody good with that? Questions, questions, questions. All right. Example two. So we've got a point. It lies on the terminal arm. Uh, there's a question in the textbook, uh, textbook, this is from a textbook, the worksheet that talks about the principal angle. Same thing as like terminal angle or terminal arm, okay, same thing. Um, the terminal arm of an angle in standard position. State each trigonometric ratio and each reciprocal ratio, oh man, we're doing a lot today, and determine the related angle and then of, of the whole 
relationship, but then the actual angle as well. Okay? Everybody ready? So let so I'm going to do this first. Again, I'm going to I'm going to sketch this. A lot of things in with angles in standard position, even just a tiny little sketch can really really help you visualize it. Not only that, you're going to notice that in this course sketching is so important whether you're asked to or not. Again, to just help with your understanding and your visualization and how you're going to come up with an answer. Um, so it's a good habit to get into sketch, sketch, sketch. It's just a little one. So we're going to just do this. And negative 512, where's that going to be? Negative 512. Notice, like, I don't care about scale or anything like that. This is literally a sketch. And so the terminal arm can pass through or it can end at, doesn't really matter. And then I've got my y coordinate there, which is 12. So this is size 12. And I've got my x coordinate here. So that's like negative 5, but this is going to be size 5. Doing okay? I know some of you were probably writing on the question. So here's what I'm going to do. When I'm given x and y values or something along those lines, I'm going to list. This is like what you do in science, listing your givens. So x is negative 5, y is 12. So what's the value that I'm missing that I need to figure out? R, that will complete sir kicks or ticks. And r is going to be, in this case, equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. That's Pythagorean theorem, right? r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Like, we are still talking about a right triangle here. That's all we're doing. But instead of in grade 10, when it gives you the side lengths, we're doing that by giving you coordinates. No different. So this is the square root of negative 5 all squared plus 12 squared. And the negative 5, when it gets squared, has, will be positive. It always will be. Okay. So 5 squared and 12 squared, I think that works out to 169 because this should work out to 13 if... I'm right, because that's a, another famous triplet, Pythagorean triplet, 5, 12, 13. Won't always be uh, like a nice integer answer, but sometimes it works out that way. Okay, so what does it ask us to do? I'm going to write down sir, kick, sir, ticks. And it asks me to state each trig ratio. So how do I use sir, kick, sir, ticks? Sine is equal to y over r, so that's 12 over 13. Cosine is x over r, so that's negative 5 ugh, over 13. You see that okay? Tan is y over r, y over x, sorry. So it's going to be negative 12 over 5, like 12 over negative 5, but I'm going to put the negative outside. Are we okay with that? I didn't do any black magic there. We're okay. Um, and notice how I, like I used the sign, the negative sign on the x, to determine whether it was negative or positive. But we also know that we're in quadrant 2, which tells us sine is positive and cosine and tangent should be negative. And look at that. It worked out, like for that reason. That's the reason why they all work out that way. But see how all these different different pieces of information that you want that you know or will know by the end of this unit help in all of your understanding. And they all fit and they all and if you're using like multiple reasons why something's negative, then that's good. Like it's sort of a a check, right? Okay, what are my reciprocal ratios? Can somebody name one? Any idea what I'm talking about? You think you have one? Yeah, so cotangent. And that's just the reciprocal of tangent. So I just take tangent and, like, the, literally I take this tangent and flip it. So it's negative 5 over 12. I don't try to memorize a different formula for that. Like, it, I don't know what it would be. Like a different sir kicks or ticks. I just think about what's tan and then flip it, right? And what's another one? Secant, what does that go with? It goes with cosine. Uh, and so that one's obviously the reciprocal of cosine, so negative 13 over 5. And the last one? 
Very good, Coach Kent. So it's C S C, and that's thirteen over twelve. The last thing it asks us to find is determine the related angle and the actual angle. This one's a little bit different. Uh, we're doing this just because it's good practice. I don't know that questions like this always ask you to do this. Um, but in this case, we could pick like all of those ratios. There's six ratios up there, but they're all for the same theta. Do you agree with that? It, like those aren't different questions. It's all the same theta. So we could use any one of those and figure out um, the angle with it. Any single one of those six. Now the reciprocal ratios, there's no reason to use them because you don't have those buttons on your calculator. So we're going to use one of the primary ratios, sine, cosine, or tan, but you can pick. Any one of them will work. So get your calculator out. I'm going to use cosine, and there's a reason for that. Okay, so, and I'm just going to come over here to kind of show. So cosine of theta is negative 5 over 13. And how am I going to find this? I'm just going to punch it into my calculator, but I want you to uh, remember one thing, so that's why we're doing this. Uh-oh. Oh, it's not going to work. Um, and that one thing is that you don't put the negative sign into your calculator. Remember that? You never put the negative sign into your calculator. What did I say before we started doing these questions? Calculator always gives you the related angle. So you always give the calculator the related angle, which is always positive. Always, 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 always. Okay. If you put the negative one in, you can still get answers correctly if you understand what it's telling you, but it might kind of mess you up. So I'm going to make sure that my calculator is in degree mode, and mine isn't. So let me fix that. So you should see a little D or something in there. So I'm in degree mode now, and I'm going to go shift, cosine, make sure it opens a bracket. Some calculators do, some calculators don't. 5 divided by 13, and hit equals. And what did you get? Anybody? Yep. Yeah. Nice. So we're just going to round to 67 degrees. Show the rounding symbol. I like the rounding symbol. And then the actual angle. How am I going to figure that out? Why 180 minus theta? Because we're in quadrant two. It's not like the last question where we have to find all four. We're in a particular quadrant. We know what the angle is. So theta in quadrant two, or just theta, because we know it's just like theta, right? So we don't actually need that part. So just theta is equal to 180 minus 67. And what does that work out to? Yeah. Thank you. Nice. And what is that? Like, so again, what does that mean? Like, I don't understand. Like, when we, cal we calculate with our calculator, it gives us 67. Why isn't that the actual angle? But again, remember what we did. We started here and we rotate it around there so this angle is 113 but my calculator always gives me the acute related angle which was there which was 67 but we rotate we didn't rotate 67 we, we always start in the same place that's why it's called standard position questions if you're feeling a bit if you if you're not yet if you are, or you're not yet, but then eventually you do, <laughs> by the end of today, feeling overwhelmed, don't like don't worry. Okay, you don't need to be an expert at all of this today. But in grade eleven, when you learn as you go, I think you don't get the same sense of the big picture. Some some people do, and some people don't, because some of us are better than at that than others. But you don't get the same big picture. It's kind of nice to see it all together all, all, all at once. OK. Determine the possible values of theta if, zero, if theta is between 0 and 360 for each of the following. So, uh, so the first one we're going to do, a sine theta is 1 over root 2. This is a, a special angle. Okay. 
And so theta is a special angle. Theta is the angle, right? 1 over root 2 is the result that we get. And we've got a few special angles. You need to recognize special angles or the results of special angles like 1 over root 2 or, two, or root 2 over 2 or root 3 over 2 or 1 half, all these different ones. And then negative 1 is not a special triangle one, but negative one, one, and zero. Those ones are kind of special. We're going to think about them in a different way. Um, that's different from if it said something like sine theta equals 0 0.7784. Right? That's not, there's nothing special about that. We'd answer a question like that differently. When you recognize a special triangle, we are going to answer it in a different way because we can get exact values. So let's get started doing that. Uh, so first of all, there's our two special triangles. The one on the left, what are my angles involved? The one on the left comes from an equilateral triangle. That's why like this part's over here, but we don't actually need to worry about that part right now. That's this one. So good, thank you for that. Somebody else? I'll, re I'll label it right now. 90, 45 degrees, and 45 degrees. That's an isosceles triangle. This one's equilateral, but then we cut off part of it. So what's this one? Yes? Good, 60, and, we, and they are right triangles always. So 60 and 30, and then of course 90. And what are my side lengths for this? This is the other trick. So you want to just, like, honestly, you want to memorize it. I don't usually say you want to memorize things, you want to understand things, and we built these from from these triangles, but probably it's a lot easier to memorize them than redoing it every time. Because the this one here, the one on the left, what we said was it's two units from, like every side length is two units, so I cut this one in half and it becomes one, but this is a full side length, it's two, and then how do I find the third one with Pythagorean theorem and it works out too? Nope. Close, that's in the other triangle. What do you think? Root 3. God, that's a long, yeah, it's hard to memorize these things, right? Unless you're working with it. But you, once you start using it, then you'll remember. So 1, 2, and root 3. Make sure you know which one's which. 1 is the smallest, root 3 is the next, and then 2 is the biggest. you got to know that 2 is the hypotenuse of that. Some people mix that up. And then the other one, we start with these side lengths as each are 1. And then we use Pythagorean theorem to find the other one, and it's root, that one's root 2. The hypotenuse of that one's root 2. 1 and 1 and root 2. Okay, so what does sine theta equals 1 over root 2, what does that tell us? Which triangle has a 1 and a root 2 in it. Isabel, what do you think? Yeah, the one on the right. So that means I'm talking about a related angle of 45 degrees. And sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 1 over root 2. So sin, they're both 45 in this case, so we don't have to worry about it. But you got to know which one's which. And you can think about Sokotoa if you have to, to figure it out. If I was in the other triangle, I would absolutely have to, oh man, i got to speed up here, figure it out, we're going to run out of time. I have to figure it out, right? Uh, but in this case, it's 45, so what do I do? I write theta related, because we're always, we're not even going to use our calculator here, but we're always calculating the related angle is 45 degrees, and listen, um, I don't, we're going to run out of time, so I can't talk too much about things that are coming up, but there will be a no calculator test portion in this unit where you have to do questions like these without your calculator. So I would say now, don't use your calculator. Force yourself to learn it with special triangles. Don't cheat, because calculators, good calculators, will do it with the radicals in there and like you can cheat, but then you'll be busted on the test big time. Okay? And so it's positive. How do I know it's positive? Because, look, it's positive. The result is positive. That's how I know. Uh, so that means I am sine is positive in which quadrants? 1 and 2. So theta 1 is 45. 
and theta in quadrant two is 180 minus 45, which is 135. There's my two answers. There's me showing my work. If I didn't have the triangles drawn up here, I probably would do a little sketch of a triangle and label it. Questions? What do I do when cos theta is negative 1? There's different ways of thinking about this. Some people try to think about it as angles in standard position. That's not how I would do it. We haven't done graphing yet, but we're going we're gonna to try to get to it today. I would think about the graph of cosine. And we're going to review it. So like, by the end of today, you're going to kind of know the graph of cosine. So what does the graph of cosine look like? You want to know where it starts and where it finishes in general kind of thing, right? So cosine is the one that starts at 1. It goes down to negative 1 and then ends back at 1. There's five special points where it starts, where it crosses the x-axis the first time, the minimum value, that's right in the middle, where it crosses the x-axis the second time, and the, where it ends. The first cycle ends right after one full period. And if we're doing this in degrees like we are right now, this is 360. So this is 180, and this is 90, and this is 270, which makes sense for the angle in the center position as well. Those were the same angles we talked about that are on the axes, the y-axis and the x-axis as we rotate around. So where is cosine theta equal to negative 1? Anybody else? Sure, go ahead. At 180 degrees. How easy was that? And in this case, there's no like related angle or anything like that. It's just theta equals 180 degrees. And I would do the same for sine if the answer was 0 or 1 or negative 1. I would use a graph. And if it's 1 over root 2, special triangle. Uh, root 3 or 1 over root 3, that's going to be your tan, special triangle. Root 3 over 2, special triangle, right? Those are the ones that I would do that. 1 half. Special triangle. Okay, here we go. Keep going. Use special triangles to determine the exact value of each of the following. Tan of 225. First thing we're going to do is draw it. Which quadrant is 225 degrees in? That's why we had to know the third one. And so if I go all the way around 225 degrees, but my, my drawing's really small. It's hard to write in there. But what's that angle going to be? So from 180... What do I have to move to get to 225? 45. So I just found my related angle. I can write it off to the side if I want. But you don't have to, necessarily. Uh, I'm going to use the cast rule here. OK, 10 is positive there, so my result is going to be positive. So I say this equals the tan of 45. Okay, that, that's a line you have to show so that you're showing your understanding. But it's also a really good idea because it'll help you work out what to do in the first step. But for like testing purposes, you have to show that line. Okay, and how do I figure out what that is? Well, if I'm in the 45 degree triangle. So there's 45. And this is 1, and this is 1, and this is root 2. And tan is opposite over adjacent, so it's 1 over 1. So it's 1, and it's positive 1. Cosine of 210. Draw this one a little bit bigger. What's my related angle? Who should I pick on? Go ahead. 30. And cast tells me that cosine is negative in that quadrant. So this is equal to 
negative the cosine of 30. Because if I put cosine of 30 into my calculator, put the related angle in, it's going to give me the quadrant one sort of answer, which is going to be positive. So I need to know that is equal to negative cosine of 30. And here's the thing. So a question like this might be on the no calculator part of the test. But otherwise, you could just go cosine of 210 on your calculator. And it would spit out an answer, and you'd write that answer down. Right? And if you have a good calculator, it'll give it to you like in fraction form. That's not good enough. We need to use angles and standard position to understand and answer these questions. OK, so if I'm in the 30 degree triangle, so remember, the small side is 1, the hypotenuse is 2, and that makes the last side root 3. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is going to equal negative root 3 over 2. Happy about that? Cosecant of 405, a lot, 405, not too many, like I said, are going to be over 360, but if it works out to be that way, then, you know, it is something that you can deduce and work through. And not too much, D is negative, not too many of them are like that, but I think there's one on the sheet, that's why we're doing an example like this. So we'll do the same thing. Where is 405 degrees going to be? What quadrant? Quadrant one, how do you figure that? Not wrong. How'd you figure it out? Okay. Okay, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Yes. So 360 is one way all the way around. 45 more gives you 405, and you're still in the first quadrant. So good. There's lots of different ways to think about it. Okay, so you're here. That makes it easy. Cosecant is a reciprocal. So cast tells us they're all positive there, so we're good with that. Cosecant is a reciprocal of? Sine. So this is equal to 1 over the sine of 45. And um, the sine of 45, if I go back up to my special triangle, the sine of 45 is opposite over hypotenuse, so 1 over root 2. So I could do this a long way, 1 over 1 over root 2, but that actually works out to root 2. If you need help with the fraction math, ask me after. I'm not going to get into that right now. But that is something you need to be able to work out, also without a calculator. Not necessarily today, like I said. Not necessarily today. I don't know what you guys did over the summer, but maybe like not fraction math all summer. So you might have to warm up a little bit. I get that. Okay, next one. Cotangent of 120 degrees. What does that even mean? It means I started here and I went this way. Not something we do very often. Not something you need to worry too much about. If that's what's stressing you out, oh my gosh, don't worry about it. Okay, but it is something that could come up occasionally. So if I went 120 degrees here, this is going to be 60. So I'm in quadrant three. And it's cotangent. Now, tangent is uh, positive in that quadrant, so we're good there. So this is equal to 1 over the tan of 60. What is the tan of 60? Let me draw my triangle here again. So there's 60, there's 1, and there's root 3. So opposite over adjacent is root 3 over 1. Are we OK? Or are we starting to get lost? Root 3 over 1 which is just root 3. So this is equal to 1 over root 3, right? Because I was just working on the bottom. You can go back and review this. We're going we're gonna to do this all over again, the grade 12 way. So if there's anything you miss, don't sweat it too, too much. But try, because it'll really help the more that you know this. Now, we're not done, because I'm not sure how much of this you did in grade 11. But in grade 12, we're always going to rationalize the denominator. So what is it? Again, we'll go over this, but I'll show you once right now. It's, it's probably pretty easy because you've seen it. I just multiply by root 3 over root 3. Why does that work? 
Again, you've learned this. I'm not reteaching it, but if, you, if you're confused and you want to know more why, ask me about it after. 1 times root 3 is root 3. And root 3 times root 3 is 3. Thank you. Right? By definition, it has to be for lots of different reasons. So now we have a denominator in the bottom that's, that's rational. It's not irrational. It's an integer. And we're happy. And there's really good reasons why we like it to be that way. Okay? Everybody okay with that? Uh, oh, here's one of those questions. This is kind of like this one, but it's like um, decimals. So it's not a special triangle angle or question. And this is one of the easiest questions that we do in this whole unit, and people just don't recognize it for what it is. So... Uh, that's why I want to cover it. But it should be an easy question. Okay. So first of all, I'm going to figure out what the related angle is. And what did we learn about the related angle? It's always positive. So in my calculator, I'm going to go shift cosine, no negative sign, 0 0.3420. You don't need the zero, of course. And I get about 70 degrees. Try it yourself. Make sure you can do it on your own calculator. Everybody's calculator is different. It's really handy to try these along with me to make sure that you get the right answer so you don't go home and try to do them on your own and you're getting all the wrong answers, you can't figure out why. Okay, um, Okay. so now we're going to use cast rule. This is, there was a little blurb, I didn't talk about this at the very beginning of the note that said, be a detective. This is kind of where you're, like, I didn't talk about it along the way, but where you're really being a detective. So I got to figure out what this question is telling me. I use that to figure out the related angle. But now I got to use cast to figure out which quadrant I'm in. Because I could have more than one answer, like I did above, right? Uh, so this is negative, and uh, cosine is negative in those two quadrants. This is positive in the other two, okay? So I'm looking for quadrant two, which is 180 minus 70, so it's 110 degrees, and quadrant three, which is 180 plus 70, so 250 degrees. We good? We got nine minutes to try to remember everything about graphing. So again, I'm going to whip through this, but if you have to go back and watch just these last few minutes of the video later, or just look at them online, or come and ask, or whatever, we're going to do graphing again the grade 12 way. Um, so there's your sine curve. There's your cosine curve. We're going, to use, we're going to do the five key questions. Remember doing the five key questions last year for graphing? So what are the five key questions? Number one is the zero line. And in this case, it's y equals zero. Number two is the amplitude. And in this case, it just equals 1, because there's no transformations on this. But then also, we're going to do the max and the min. And they are 1 and negative 1. We use the amplitude and the zero line to find the maximum. We're going to try to, uh, if we get time, do an example of this so you see it in action. Question 3 is where does it start? And uh, the base graph for sine starts at, well, for both of them, starts at 0. Th this is the x value that it starts at. I don't know why I wrote theta there, sorry. Habit. 4 is the period. And this is equal to 360. 5 is the stop. And this is equal to the start plus the period. So it's 360 for the base graph. You got to know the base graph. Got to know where the points are. Sine is starts on the zero line, goes to the max, goes back to the zero line, goes to the min, ends on the zero line. Cosine starts at the max. We talked about this one a little bit. Goes to the zero line, goes to the min, goes back to the zero line, ends at the max. Okay. Then... Find your x scale. 
which is often the trickiest part. And for grade 12, it's a lot harder. But we're not going to do that for a little while. Everybody okay with this so far? I'm going to try to dive into this one and see how far we get. Okay, so one is my zero line. That's like my D value. That gives me my vertical shift. So Y equals negative two. Two is my amplitude. My A value is negative three, but my amplitude is three. And my max and my min from negative two up three is one. And sorry, negative, no, what am I doing here? From negative two up three is one and from negative two down three is negative five. Question three is where does it start? That's my phase shift. Plus 30 means a shift to the left, 30. So my start is negative 30. My period, this is like a full on tough question. You wouldn't start with this one in grade 11. But it's a good example that shows us a little bit of everything uh, as a review. So how do I find the period? It's 360 over the K value, which is 360 over 2, which is 180. So my period is 180. So my stop is negative 30 plus 180, which is 150. How do I find my critical points? I don't have time to explain this, so I'm going to try to graph it. Again, you can ask after. Don't worry too much about it right now. We'll review it again. But you basically take your period and divide by 4. And in this case, that gives me 45. And then what you need to do for your x scale is divide 45 by something and make sure that matches where it starts. So if I divide 45 by 3, that gives me 15. And 15 divides into 30, so I'm good. Okay, in this case it works out nicely. In some cases it won't. Again, don't worry about that kind of a case right now. Everybody okay? Uh, oh, I am going to just watch now, and if you want to draw this later, you can draw it later, okay? I can't really use a ruler on this computer, unfortunately, so uh, you'll have to excuse the fact that I would always use a ruler, and you should always use a ruler to draw your axes. There we go. My X scale is 15, so I'm counting 1... 15, 30, 45, okay, negative 45, sorry, and so 1, 2, 3 is 45, 1, 2, 3 is 90, 1, 2, 3 is 135, 1, 2, 3 is 180. Uh, I'm starting, it's, it's sign, it's reflected, I'm starting on the zero line, I'm going to say that's here, so here's my zero line, so I go back to 30 and down to the zero line. My minimum is 5, so that's 2, 3, 4, 5. So I go, and remember my x scale was 3. I divided by 3. That means I'm counting 3 squares. That's the whole awesome part of that. So from here, I go down to my minimum, and I go over 1, 2, 3. Back to my zero line, 1, 2, 3. Up to my maximum, 1, 2, 3. Back to the zero line, 1, 2, 3, because that's what sine does. Try to learn how to draw a nice smooth curve. There's one cycle of sine. It was reflected. That's why I went down to the minimum first. Whew. Three minutes left. Questions? Uh, arrows on the ends of axes. If you're asked to draw one cycle of this, no. Usually with periodic functions, we don't do arrows because it doesn't. it's not like a parabola. It doesn't go up forever. It's going to go up for a bit and go back down. So we don't usually, with sine and cosine, use arrows. We kind of get lazy and we don't worry about it. Any other questions?